Today we're going to talk about one of the most influential American songwriters, Elliot Smith. Elliot Smith's life was cut tragically short, but his music continues to inspire today's songwriters 30 years later, like Phoebe Bridgers and Frank Ocean. We're going to look at three aspects of his writing style that anyone can explore and try on their own, even beginners. This is the music theory of Elliot Smith. First, I want to take one minute to explain what I mean by music theory. Feel free to skip ahead if you'd like. Music theory is an important but often misunderstood concept. It's really just the attempt to explain what's going on in a given style of music or even a single piece. Now, I learned music theory at an American conservatory, and mostly what is taught as music theory only covers a very tiny slice of music, namely the tradition of European classical music. And while many of those concepts can be applied to music from other times and places, it makes a lot more sense to look at different styles of music differently, because they're often built in fundamentally different ways. One example that might surprise you is the commonly repeated idea of the three elements of music, harmony, melody, and rhythm. This idea is completely arbitrary. Again, while it's cool to try taking any piece of music apart along those lines, it inherently places certain styles of music over others. Take something like drone-based music, which doesn't prioritize rhythm in the common sense, or early hip-hop, which is often just bare drums and a rapper over top, not prioritizing melody or harmony in the common sense. People love to use the three elements of music argument to make bigoted claims like certain styles of music aren't music or are inherently beneath the perfection of Wagner and Beethoven. But what if we flipped it around? Lyrics are a crucial element of most hip-hop. On those grounds, we could dismiss every Beethoven symphony except his ninth. The point is, it's obviously ridiculous to diminish the value of any music on these arbitrary grounds. But more importantly, we're not going to be able to fully appreciate and understand different styles of music if we look at everything through a single lens. This video on the music theory of Elliot Smith won't be about analyzing his music with any of those tools like sonata form or Shankarian analysis. Instead, I'm going to try to look at his music on its own terms and see what common themes emerge. In this video, we'll be looking at the thing that really forms the foundation of Elliot Smith's music, the guitar. Elliot Smith wrote most of his music on the guitar, and for this video, I'm going to show you three simple writing techniques he used, starting with number one, half chords. You can't learn an Elliot Smith song without running into one of these, what he called half chords. It's just a chord where you don't play all the strings. These half chords can make common chords feel more unique and can really change the emotion of a chord progression. A good example is Needle in the Hay, where most of the song is played with just two strings at a time. Listen to these two examples, first using common chord shapes and then using half chords. To try this on your own, all you have to do is remember there are no rules. Any combination of notes, strings, frets that sounds good to you is gold. He talked about writing music sometimes without even looking at his left hand, just letting his fingers wander around the neck and trying out new shapes. And this can be done on any instrument. On piano or any digital MIDI instrument, try just using two notes at a time. It's amazing what you can come up with when you start stripping away unnecessary information. Number two, different tunings. Instead of using different chord shapes, try changing the tuning of one or two strings and then playing normal chord shapes. He used special tunings for many of his songs, but here are a couple of my favorite examples.
part about using different tunings is it gives you a chance to surprise yourself with the sounds that come out of the guitar. And that can inspire new ideas and life in a creative process. Last but not least in this list of Elliott Smith music theory concepts is follow the melody. For any beginners out there, a melody is the part of a song you'd sing, the most prominent musical line. Sometimes it's sung and other times it's played by instruments. One of the coolest aspects of Elliott Smith's writing that's especially evident in his first three albums is the way the melodies he sings are imitated or included precisely within the guitar part. And now we hear the vocal melody following the guitar melody. It's coming up roses everywhere There's no way to know if he wrote his vocal melodies before or after writing his guitar parts, but the idea works both ways. Here's a couple examples. First, let's say we write a guitar part either with basic chords or just some kind of riff. If you're having trouble coming up with a melody, try just picking out one of the notes you're playing and singing that note, filling in the words later. Now, let's say you start with that and as you write the words, you start adding different notes. Let's see if we can add those moving notes from your melody into the guitar part, or at least copy the rhythm or movement in some way. Now the guitar part has a unique flair and the whole song feels more alive. This idea has a lot of room for exploration. Try it out. Here's a couple of my favorite examples from his songs. If you enjoyed this video, I've got videos breaking down every song on the self-titled album, and we're about to get started on either or, so subscribe for more videos. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.